Hey folks, how you doing? This is Reverend Linus Pierce right here for the 31st of October 2014. It's Nevada Day here in Nevada and and Halloween around the country. Lots of things going on. Lots of things happening. I want to remind you that you can come to uh, Eastland Radio Repertory Theater on Spreaker to listen to a live broadcast of some radio shows from yesteryear. A little Halloween special going on at Eastland Radio Repertory Theater. And uh, come check it out. 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. And we will definitely have some fun there, shall we? Yes, we will. The one thing I want to talk about today is it's very simple. I don't want to get too much into uh, politics. I don't want to get too much into, you know, what's going on. I'll uh, save all that for Monday on the Views Express Live, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right there at freeamericaradio.us. There's a lot of things that are going on, and and I want to take this first segment and just, well, after the obligatory break at the five after mark. <laughs> and I want to uh, discuss our, our, our judicial system for a minute. And maybe I'll get into it now. I've got a, I've got a couple of minutes. I'll make it brief. Uh, it's bought and paid for, folks. All of it. It's all bought and paid for. I mean, when you have a judge or judges, I should say, not one in particular, but judges granting special or limited rights to any defendant or anybody in their courtroom, that is not a judge that is following the Constitution of the United States. Period. They're bought and paid for. That's it. And that's the point I wanted to make, but I'm not a lawyer. I'm not uh, any of that, so, you know. But let me remind you that when you go into the court, you are protected by the Constitution prior to 1871. The judge has pledged to defend that. His pledge to uphold the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States of America is what he did, and you and him are protected by that same constitution, but unfortunately he has to interpret it against you. Not that he wants to, but he's going to use every piece of law that he can to make sure that the law is followed. You're going to make sure that the law is followed. Uh, you know, and, and that's just the way it is. And when you when you know what the law is, when you understand what the law is, not that you have to go to you know law school or break out the Black's Law Dictionary or anything, but the basic law pertaining to what it is you're in court for, you're the winner. Okay, that's just the way it is. And if you get contention from the court, meaning the judge then you have a right to remain silent. But if it is, you know, to the degree to which you have to say something and protect yourself and, and uh, support your, you know, your view of things, then being silent might not be the best option. I'm just saying... I'm not a lawyer or anything like that. Consult your local attorneys, your local law firms, and find out on your own what you can and cannot do. (laughs) Okay, I'm just saying this is my opinion. Uh, But common sense tells me, you know, if you know you're going to put your foot in it, don't say a word. And invoke your right to uh, not say anything. Hey, I'm going to go to break. I'll be right back right after this. Hey there, I'm Big Tiny, I'm the host of Big Tiny's Always and More, and we're playing music that you just love to hear from the 50s to the 90s. So check us out Monday through Friday and see what we're playing right here on Springer.com.
This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce from the Free America Radio Network. Come join me on The Views Express Live, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, on freeamericaradio.us. This is Wayne S. Pierce from the Free America Radio Network, and we are looking for sponsors. If you want to sponsor any of the shows on the Free America Radio Network, email us at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Our website is freeamericaradio.us. Hey folks, welcome back. This is the Wayne S. Pierce Show podcast, 31st of October 2014. I'm your host, Reverend Reverend Wayne S. Pierce. Yes, I'm a reverend. I don't always use that title, but, uh, well, yeah, I do. But (laughs) but I am an actual minister. I can marry, bury, and baptize people. Not necessarily in that order, but you know what I mean, okay? Uh, But anyway, people have asked me about that. Are you a legitimate minister? Are you, you know, is that a real reverend? Well, yeah, and I give them all the links and all the information that I have, and and they shut up because they don't like the fact that I can prove what I say, you know, so, you know. And if you're liberal, yeah, you might as well just, you know, not listen to the show because I'm going to tell you things that's going to, you're going to pull your hair out and you're going to get pissed off about, so. Go stick around your liberal, democratic, fascist, Marxist, socialist, communist pigs, because that's what you are. Anyway, yes, I'm, you know, last year, about the end of last year, I, I told people in, in my broadcast, I said, I'm not going to hold anything back. And I'm going to tell it like it is. And, and if people get pissed off, not my problem. I just, you know, I'm the one that comes in, you know, and tears everything up and yells and screams at the top of my lungs. And then I stop when everybody else is pissed off and about ready to jump me. I look at them and say, oh, by the way, I'll come in and clean this up with a crew if you at least take a look at what I've said. Not one person will ever do that. I don't know anybody. Well, I I shouldn't say I don't know anybody. I I know very few people that would do that. Go in, yell, scream, jump up and down, dance on the tables, and then turn around and offer to, you know, help them out, you know, or in some way, shape, or form, encourage them to go look at information that could pertain to their situation because I got their attention. Now, some people say, well, you know, you're just spouting off opinions with nothing to back it up. Really? I got 35 years of experience in research and investigation and shadow governments and other things. Don't tell me I don't have the information to back it up because you're contradicting me, which means the burden of proof is on you. And if you can't bring your information to the table for a healthy and, and honest debate and discussion about things, there's the door. Bye. Have a nice day. So that's just me. That's just me. And I know for a fact that some people get all upset that I'm up in people's faces like that. Not my problem. I know that some people are really pissed off at the fact that that I won't or or their perspective and their perception and their interpretation is I won't see things their way. Well, guess what? I wouldn't be saying what I say if I didn't see things their way. Okay? I just I just wouldn't. But let me get away from all that And let me tell you this, everything is rigged, folks. Everything 100% down the line is rigged from day one, actually from the uh, implementation of the Organic Act of 1871. It's all rigged. 
And there's been shadow governments for many, 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 many years. I should say there have been people behind the scenes that have operated in the shadows. That's where you get the term shadow uh, government or black projects that want to subvert the very laws that you and I are supposed to follow. Again, folks, I'm not a lawyer, but I will say this doesn't take. It doesn't take hours out of your day to go sit and do some research on the laws pertaining to your area. You can also go anywhere you want on the internet and find a PDF of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Go check it out. It's right there in writing. Go look up the Organic Act of 1871. You might not see the exact words that I use, which is you know, a corporation, but when you start looking into bits and pieces, uh, you will find the truth. And please, please do not use Snopes.com that, and, and any other site like that. Because there are some bogus pieces of crap out there and have absolutely no clue what they're talking about. Well, it's their opinion. Granted, I will stand on that, yes. I will stand on the fact that it is their opinion, and I will defend their right to have that opinion, but they are dead wrong on everything they talk about. Anybody know the people at Snopes.com? Have them email me and prove me wrong, because now the burden of proof is on them and me, of course, I know. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. And anybody that has any information about Snopes.com, who runs it, how it's run, blah, 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 who owns it, this kind of thing. I mean, you know, we need to know these things. So what do we do? We're in a rigged game, folks. We're in a rigged game. Okay? Okay. We often overlook the most complex things only because we cannot understand them due to the fact that we have been indoctrinated to not look any further than what the authorities have told you to look at. And as far as I'm concerned, folks, when somebody tells me not to look behind door number three, guess where I'm going to go? Well, you're just a rebel. Well, what if you don't find anything back there? Then I don't find anything back there. Simple as that. Things are not the way they seem to be or that they present themselves to be. When you look at the candidates, as a matter of fact, you can go back to uh, the Clinton administration. Actually, prior to the Clinton administration. And you can see that there were certain things that were done in the campaign. There were certain things that were happening at the DNC, at the, uh, at the Democratic National Convention. There were certain things that were said. There were certain codes you can pull out of all of that. Okay? And you can overlap the campaign of Bill Clinton with the campaign of Barack Obama. Because it's the exact same thing. It's, it's the, when you look at all the Democrats running, when you look at all that, look at the Democratic Party. The, the progressive, democratic, socialist, Marxist, communist, fascist party. Look at it. Examine every move that they make. And examine every subsequent person after that running for office or the whole picture of that party when their candidates are running. It's the same script over and over and over again. Okay. Same script. You look at the Republican Party. You look at how it's the same thing. Don't overlap Democratic processes with Republican, but Republican has their own script that they have to follow 
because they're against the Democrats. So they got their own ideologies that they have to, uh, uh, you know, thrust upon the masses of sheep that are out there. Same thing. Same thing. You don't get... You don't get the truth nor nor any closer to the truth by doing the same thing over and over and over and over. You don't. You get <laughs> you get mass insanity coupled with the processes of propaganda and you get mass hysteria. That's from both parties, folks. Okay, now I'm going to say this: there are dinos, which are D-I-N-O's, Democrats in name only. There are rhinos, Republican in name only. And now I believe there are linos, L-I-N-O's, libertarians in name only. Why do I say that? Because I believe that some of the more lesser known people of the Democratic and Republican parties are leaving those parties to be a part of the libertarian movement to do what? Co-opt it. Like the Republican Party did to the Tea Party. Well, we need a national platform. No, you don't. You need to make your own damn platform. Well, we need the backing of a certain group so that we can get national exposure. No, you don't. You need to expose yourself to the national masses so that you can have, so that they can see your own ideas. You know, I mean, that's just the way it is. Take, for instance, the platform of the Republican Party. What do they want? You can go check that out yourself. Take a look at the national platform of the Democratic Party. What do they want? You can check that out yourself. And, of course, take a look at the Libertarian Party. Their platform is what? Well, I'm going to say this, and it might, oh, I don't know, piss off some people, but you people who follow any of these parties, or I should say the two dominant parties in this system, are the dumbest people on the face of the planet. Because when you look at the parties and look at the creation of these parties and look at why they were created, okay, and and that's up to you. You need to go out and look this up yourself. You're going to (laughs) find that you are actually voting for the wrong party. Not that you need to jump ship and go to the... Neither party knows what they're doing. Neither party has the... Uh, best interest of the people. Because when you look at the creation of these parties, chances are you're going to find where these parties were funded by some very, let's just say, wealthy, well-to-do businessmen, such as mine owners and railroad moguls and shipping moguls and all of that you're going to you're going to find the dots connected to some very well to do very well connected individuals now somebody once told me and of course this is in, in history as well some of our founding fathers were were uh, uh you know wine connoisseurs they had their vineyards some had tobacco farms some had hemp farms some had you know dairy farms some had regular you know food that they grew corn and beets and potatoes and you know stuff like that and they were that way and some were attorneys okay having gone to some very elite Educational facilities, educational institutes across the U.S. of that time, trained by people from where? England. Yep. 
Go look it up. Where do you think the Magna Carta came from? Some of the Magna Carta wound up in our Constitution. Go look at it. All I'm saying, folks, is you have to connect the dots. If you cannot connect the dots, if you don't want to, not my problem. I mean, you can look this stuff up yourself. Seriously, you can. Um, So, where do we go from here? Well, first of all, I'm going to go to break, and I shall return. And when I do, we'll get into some news and let you know what's happening on uh, various fronts. So this is the Wayne S. Pierce Show. Go to thewaynespierceshow.weebly.com. If you want to sponsor the show, go to the sponsors uh, link up there, sponsors page. Uh, If you want to get your emergency food supply, you can do that too. But if you want to donate, you can also do that. The Wayne S. Pierce Show.weebly.com site or you can email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. I shall return right after this. Eastland Radio Repertory Theater is looking for you. Are you a voice actor? Do you want to hone your abilities? Please send your audition clips to Eastland Radio Theater at usa.com. We are currently looking for voice actors to fill certain character roles in an ongoing radio play in development. Please send your audition clips to Eastland Radio Theater at usa.com. This storm is on the horizon. The system of government that we currently have in this country is collapsing. We are on the brink of total disaster as a nation, a people, and a planet. Who or what can save us? Listen to The Views Express Live, Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific, at freeamericaradio.us. Hey folks, welcome back. This is the Wayne S. Pierce Show. Wayne S. Pierce Show, excuse me, let me get this right so you can go to the right place. The Wayne S. Pierce Show dot Weebly dot com. The Wayne S. Pierce Show dot Weebly dot com. Or go to the Wayne S. Pierce Show on Facebook. Check that out as well. If you want to uh, sponsor this show, please do. I would love your support. Go to the sponsors page at thewaynespierceshow.weebly.com and uh, check it out. Not now, I'm not out to break your advertising budget, so that's the way I like to keep it. And so you can also donate if you'd like. That would be awesome. Also get your emergency food supply Right there on the website. You never know when the next natural or man-made disaster will happen, so you're going to need all the extra stuff that you can get. Go to the waynespierceshow.weebly.com site, click on the emergency food supply tab, and get yours today. And help out your family and help out Free America Radio Network. Thank you very much. So anyway, let's get into some news, shall we? Yes, we'll get into some news. Anyway, let's go to uh, the uh, go-to site that I like to go to as soon as it comes up. Um, A lot of things, and this is just me, the the thing that... um, The thing that I feel is best for people to do is to do their own homework. Okay? Um, That, to me, is, I think, the best thing to do. And something... 
that I like people to do is to do their own homework, of course, think for themselves, of course, go beyond the boundaries that others have set up for them. But what I'd like people to do more than anything is educate themselves on literally what is happening either right next door to where they are or around the world because it's the only way you're going to be able to to really decide for yourself how you're going to protect your family and yourself. That's the ultimate goal. Okay, and that's why I do these shows. I do the views, exp- uh, views exp- <coughs> excuse me. The views express live <coughs> and I tell you what's happening and who's behind the curtain pushing the buttons and pulling the handles and with this show I share with you some personal insights and also some news and uh, I don't pull any punches and I don't give you BS. That's just the way it is. Gary Shapiro over at the Washington Post writes this. What happens when your friend's smartphone can tell when you're lying or can tell that you're lying? <clears throat> Thank you, Gary. <clears throat> in just a few weeks, the next installment of The Hunger Games will arrive in movie, th- movie theaters. The latest in a long line of films to depict a future of all-knowing or controlling government, think 1984 or Minority Report. The dystopian tale will likely be a runaway hit, but the power to see all-knowing, or at least no more than you do now, may seem may soon lie in the technology that already is in the palm of your hand. We are nearing a point where our smartphones will be able to recognize a face or a voice in real life or on screen, and identification is only the most basic of uh, the possibilities. Many app makers are experimenting with software that can also analyze, uh, able to determine someone's emotions or honesty just by a few facial cues. The interpersonal assessment technology promises to make our lives easier. For instance, facial recognition technology can allow people to get immediate and amazing customer service. If a restaurant or retailer can identify me before I walk in the door, it would be able to identify me as a returning customer accessing my favorite dishes or products. I would be greeted like an old friend, whether I were or not. Similarly, algorithms are now being developed that link thousands of facial cues with human emotions. Our brains do this naturally. We know without asking whether someone is happy or upset based only on their expressions. Law enforcement and poker players take this a step further using facial cues to determine someone's honesty. But with technology augmenting our brain's natural behavior... Keep that in mind, folks. Possibly providing direct, measurable, and verifiable input, we can produce measurable and verifiable data. As sensors move from our smartphones to activity trackers to smartwatches from Apple and Samsung, we are measuring more than ever and are not far off from continuously tracking our emotions. And software is now in development to interpret people's emotions, then project, uh, then project the results via an app onto a screen such as Google Glass. Technology augmenting our brain's natural behavior. Startpage.com, go to 2045.com, 2045.com. Continuing... Technology can also analyze the human voice to determine emotion. Again, not just mimicking, but surpassing our brain's abilities. Moody's, an app developed by Beyond Verbal, is able to detect a speaker's mood based on nothing more than a voice. Worldwide worldwide call centers are testing the technology to help operators determine whether callers are upset and likely to switch their business to a competitor. In other words, all the collection agencies that are calling you now are going to have, they're going to be robo calls. And if you are like, shut up, they're going to switch. They're, they're going to do something and, and the algorithms are going to tell the computer to switch to a different mode and you know, all that. But anyway, <clears throat> continuing. 
There are also some potentially negative consequences if you can simply run a person's image and voice through an app to determine their emotions and veracity. We will have to adjust as a society. Many of our daily interactions are built on small lies. Quote, so happy to see you, unquote, or uh, quote, unquote, of course I remember you, un, uh, and quote, unquote, this is the best food activity or place. Uh, in other words, society's function is smoothed by little white lies. Do we really want to eliminate that? As we uncover <coughs> our deceptions, implicit and explicit, including those of which we have conceived uh, or convinced even ourselves, a market for technology that hides our emotions will arise. Entrepreneurs may create, quote, emotion cloaking devices, unquote. Uh, facial coverings may become more popular. Perhaps there'll be sanctuaries where no devices are allowed either by custom or law, an atmosphere akin to how we uh, feel about taking pictures in public bathrooms and kids' classrooms. One thing is for sure, Politics is in for a major overhaul. With every smartphone possessing a virtual lie detector test, uh, elected officials will need to be creative in ways they talk to us. In fact, my fear, the writer here says, my fear is the most insecure and most powerful politicians will resist and quickly seek to regulate or restrict these technologies, ignoring their obvious good in a hidden but discoverable attempt to preserve their own power and half-truths. Ready or not, technologies are quickly arriving, which allow us to assess other people to a degree of accuracy we've never before imagined. Well, by no means a cure for Alzheimer's, at least in the disease's early stages. Facial recognition software could supplement a sufferer's slowly deteriorating memory and help recall acquaintances, friends, and loved ones. Before we rush to decry these assessment technologies, we must also consider their incredible array of benefits. If this quote-unquote recognition revolution can indeed realize its potential, won't it absolutely be worth a little uncertainty today? Gary Shapiro is the president and chief executive of Consumer Electronics Association, the U.S. Trade Association representing more than 2,000 consumer electronic companies, and author of the New York Times bestseller books, Ninja Innovation, the 10, killing, uh, the Ten Killer Strategies of the World's Most Successful Businesses, and uh, The Comeback, How Innovation Will Restore the American Dream. His views are his own. Connect with him on Twitter. I'm going to put this one up on uh, the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. So, <clears throat> I want to say this. Technology is a good thing. I, I'm just, I just want that out there from me to you. Technology is a good thing, okay? <clears throat> and I feel, like everybody else that I know, I feel that when you, when somebody has a sociopathic type of mindset, there's no telling the evils that that person will conduct with that technology. I mean, I mean seriously. How can anybody in their right mind use this technology for anything other than good. Okay? How can they? I never could understand why people, oh, that, why people would say, that's bad, that's bad, it's going to be, oh, oh, whatever. I don't know how they could say that and not recognize the fact that the technology can be used for good. Okay? Will it be subjected to regulation and, 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 you know, the overburdening process of bureaucracy? Oh, you bet. I can, I, I can almost say that as a certainty. But can we also say that the technology that is being produced and created now can be used for good? For instance, you know, one of my favorite movies is Star Wars. And, you know, the Jedi in that movie have lightsabers, which, of course, is now being uh, 
uh, let, let's put it this way. Uh, on paper, the theories behind that and the processes to build one of those is in the works, not in the United States of America. But they use it for defense, much like here in Nevada. We're an open carry state. We can carry our weapon on us, our handgun. Right out in plain sight, we can carry it. It's there for our good. You know? But everything will be, well, mostly everything will be used for the benefit of of the evil, corrupted minds of those in bureaucracy. So anything that someone like you and I can create, guaranteed 100% of the time, somebody's going to take it and use it for something bad. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen when your cell phone can tell whether or not your friend is lying to you? To me, that's a trust issue. What's it going to be like when you walk into a, a, a store, right? And the, the microphone picks up the clerk's, you know, the, the cashier's words, and he's talking to you about something, but your phone tell, is telling you he's lying through his teeth. What are you going to do? Because you know damn well the people walking around now got their cell phones out. They're looking at somebody. They're either they've either got Skype or Tango, or they're looking at the video of a friend that's talking to them. They're talking to them on the video. That mic is going to pick something up. The alert's going to come from this app that you have on your phone, this lie detector app, and you're going to tell whether or not the person on the phone or the person that's near you is lying through their teeth. This is why politicians want to shut down that technology because they don't they want to lie to you through their teeth. They're not going to tell you the truth. They're going to well they're going to there's this thing called honey pot. They're honey potting you. They're 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 throwing some truth bait out there for you to snag a hold of and then they're going to pull you in and go, "Oh, by the way, no, that's not what I'm going to do." So, how do you think that's going to go over? Seriously, how do you think that's going to to uh, to fly with these people? It's not. It's just not. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think that type of technology should ever be on a phone. Okay? I, I, I really, really don't. Your phone is to communicate between you and someone else. Not to be used as some tool, although we use it now as a tool. It's a tool to communicate, right? Well, that's all it should be for. Well, we need to get on the internet. Well, no, 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 no. Not on your phone. You can carry your tablet with you. You can carry, carry your, you know, whatever you're carrying. iPad, you know, your tablet, whatever. You can get on the internet with that. Not on your phone, it's ridiculous. Well, people are just going to do it. Well, I know. People are going to do it. They don't care. You know why? Because, you know, you're carrying around a mini computer with you. Did you know that? You're carrying around a mini computer. You got your screen. You got your keyboard. You've got your uh, audio or visual input. Your webcam and your microphone. You've got, I mean... It's right there. It's right there. You're not going to get away from it. So what do you think? What do you think about this piece of technology coming out? WashingtonPost.com. What happens when your friend's smartphone can tell that you're lying? Get ready for the scary but refreshing world where smartphones unmask our true emotions. Think about that, folks, and I'll be back right after this.
Get your morning started with the morning brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to radiorocktheblitz.blogspot.com. Listen to the Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show, Friday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com. See that car in your rearview mirror? The driver wants to kill you. Don't take it personally. You just happen to be in the way. Now, with a gun in one hand and a steering wheel in the other, this distant runner-up in the human race feels empowered for the very first time. At least our boys finally found a purpose in life. Red Asphalt by Scott Cherney. Available at Amazon.com. Hello, folks. Welcome back. How are you? You good? All right, cool. Right on. It's the 31st of October, 2014. It's Nevada Day here in in Nevada. Yeah. 150 years old. Yeah. Nevada is 150 years old. Damn, I hope I look this good when I'm 150. You know, (laughs) I'm just kidding, folks. I'll get to a 200 and wonder why. But anyway... Life extension technology, not for the poor, but for those that can afford it, like the Rockefellers and Rothschilds and all that. But anyway, 2045.com. Check that out, folks. Check it out. 2045.com. Anyway. So what else is going on in the news? Well, let's go to the GoTo site. That I go to a lot. DrudgeReport.com I just want to... Just want to say, let's hope that nobody got hurt. uh, Virgin space crash in Mojave. Just want to put this out here. Uh, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 crashes during testing. Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 crashed after it had an in-flight anomaly during testing testing Friday. According to a Mojave Air and Spaceport spokesperson, the status of its pilots is unknown. The statement from Virgin Galactic said its partner uh, Scaled Composites conducted the test Friday uh, the test flight uh, Friday uh, during which a serious anomaly led to the loss of the vehicle. It was the company's first rocket-powered test flight in nine months. In January, Spaceship 2 reached 71,000 feet, its highest altitude so far. Virgin Galactic has conducted testing for the spacecraft in the Mojave Desert at Mojave Air and Spaceport, about 100 miles northeast of Los Angeles. British billionaire Richard Branson's commercial space venture in May announced an agreement with the Federal Aviation Administration that helped clear the path to send paying customers on a suborbital flight. The agreement sets the parameters for how routine missions to space will take place in uh, national airspace. It does not yet give the company a license to launch these missions. The company's plans have been repeatedly delayed. Branson said earlier this month, at a celebration in Mojave that it was on the verge of going to space, but he did not give a time frame. This post will be updated. Uh, Updates, 11.45 a.m., updated confirmation that the spaceship crashed. The post was originally published at 11.30 a.m. So let's just hope the pilots are okay. If not, well... 
<clears throat> Reed tries begging. Here's something more local. I'm going to say this. Nevada, get rid of Harry Reed. He is a piece of, well, it rhymes with uh, Schmidt. Okay? I'm just saying. Uh, from the weeklystandard.com, weeklystandard.com, Harry Reid is now begging for support. He made the comment in an email to supporters of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. The subject of the email from Reid, the Senate Majority Leader, reads, quote, I'm begging, which is no wonder considering his job is at stake. If Democrats lose the Senate, Reid will no longer hold his current leadership position. Quote, Daniel, I've been emailing a ton, unquote, Reed writes, quote, but I'm emailing once more because this moment is absolutely critical. I know you're busy. I know you're a busy person, but this is an absolute must read. Our final weekend get out the vote push is on the chopping block. We still uh, we're still one million three hundred and eighty nine thousand seventy one dollars short with 24 hours left. If we don't fill that budget gap, we'll be forced to scale back our plans to mobilize 575,000 voters this weekend. What? These are voters who could determine the outcome of the whole Senate. I'm begging for your help to close the gap immediately. If we fall short before the last end-of-the-month deadline tomorrow, our chance of, uh, to keep the Senate gets a whole lot smaller. Will you pitch in to the final weekend Geo TV push, get out the vote push before the final deadline in 24 hours? We'll triple match your gift. The election is next week. Daniel Harper is author of Clinton Incorporated, The Audacious Rebuilding of a Political Machine. And Daniel Har- Halper, excuse me, Daniel Halper, um, he, uh, Harry Reid is done. <clears throat> I'm going to put this up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page as well. Harry Reid is done. He is an idiot. He has. He is a progressive. He is in the pockets of the New World Order. He, nobody cares about him. Okay. He's done. Okay. He, he's, he's just a piece of trash. He's a globalist. He's done. Okay. Now, the other thing here is, here's something else. I'll put this up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page because, well, I can. Something that you need to pay attention to, folks. Just saying. Just putting it out there. Federal, this is from the NBCWashington.com. Federal government made $20 billion in secret purchases in recent months. I-Team Review finds $30,000 in one agency Starbucks purchases kept confidential from public. The federal government has spent at least $20 billion in taxpayer money this year on items and services that is that it is permitted to keep secret from the public, according to an investigation by the News 4 I-Team. This is News 4 I-Team, NBCWashington.com. Uh, it is written by Scott McFarland. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it very much. The purchases known among federal employees as micro-purchases are made by some of the thousands of agency employees who are issued taxpayer-funded purchase cards. The purchases, in most cases, remain confidential and are not publicly disclosed by the agency. A sampling of those purchases obtained by the I-Team via the Freedom of Information Act reveals at least one agency used those cards to buy $30,000 in Starbucks coffee drinks and products in one year without having to disclose or detail the purchases to the public. 
A micro-purchase, I'm just highlighting some of the paragraphs here. A micro-purchase is a purchase costing less than $3,000 in which a government-issued purchase card is swiped. The U.S. Departments of State, Homeland Security, Veteran Affairs, Transportation, and Defense each made tens of millions of dollars of micro-purchases in the past year, according to an I-Team review. But each agency said it does not make... Uh, public an itemized list of its transactions, limited, limiting the information to internal government reviewers and users of the Federal Freedom of Information Act. Really? Huh. The I-Team, using the Freedom of Information Act, received a list of micro-purchases made by the Department of Homeland Security at Starbucks vendors nationwide in 2013. The list includes dozens of transactions, including in Washington, D.C. and Maryland. Several of the purchases were made at an Alameda, uh, California Starbucks vendor and cost more than $2,400 each, just below the $3,000 threshold for which purchases need to be publicly disclosed. After reviewing the I-Team's findings, Representative John Micah, Republican of Florida, chair of the U.S. House Oversight Committee, said, quote, When you have $10,000 being spent at one Starbucks by DHS employees in one city in six months, someone is abusing the purchasing permi- uh, permission that we have given them, unquote. Ann Richards, an agency auditor, told Micah and the committee members, quote, most of the purchases seem to be legitimate use of the cards, she said. Quote, we will be looking at all of those purchases, and as part of our audit, we will be looking at the types of purchases in which coffee shops jump on, jump out at you, unquote. Some of the Starbucks purchases cost less than $40, indicating the potential small-scale individual gift cards or drink purchases. So that one's up on the um, Wayne S. Pierce Show uh, Facebook page. So you want to go check that out as well. <clears throat> you see where your tax dollars are going, folks? Here, uh, let me break that down for you. You hand somebody $100. And you tell them, hey, it's yours. You just keep track of it. We want a detailed... Uh, itemized statement at the end of the month, let's just say a thousand, there's a little more than that. And they say, okay, but then you tell this person you just handed a thousand dollar, you know, budget to saying, yeah, also under certain policies, you don't have to disclose to the public anything that you buy, but just disclose it with us and then we'll do it internally and all that and we'll, we'll go from there. Do you not think that whoever you hand that $1,000 budget to is not going to abuse it? Okay, if nobody's overseeing them, or no one's holding them accountable or responsible for that money, do you think that they're going to be, oh yeah, I'll stay within the budget? Oh hell no, they're going to go out and spend that money. Okay? So don't give me that. Well, it was legitimate purchases. No, it wasn't. It's my tax dollars paying for somebody else to go have Starbucks coffee. You understand me? It's wasteful spending. These people don't get it. In Washington, D.C., they have absolutely no clue how to save their money, how to put it away, how to, uh, uh, you know, not wastefully spend well, you know, it. Uh... Here, let me take your paycheck and show you exactly what I mean by wasteful spending. How much do you make? Yeah, let me take your paycheck and let me go out and not pay your rent, not pay your utility bill, not pay your car payment, not pay your cable, not pay your cell phone, not pay your, you know, uh, 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 gas bill, not pay your, you know, not pay anything. And I'll just go out and spend it on whatever I want. Oh, I'm going to go look at some, you know, heavy metal magazines or something. And I'm going to go out. Oh, I got to get this over here. And Oh, yeah, I got to get some more stuff for my studio. And oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, here. Here's a buck. I'll give you back a dollar or two and say, oh, well, yeah, well you're just going to have to deal with it. That's you giving your money to me i.e. 
our tax dollars going to the federal government, and they just spend it on whatever they want. We need to stop that crap right now, don't you think? Because if I grabbed your paycheck and went and did that, you'd kick my ass. So why don't we start kicking some government ass? Why don't we tell our, our, our county board of supervisors, our city councils, our governors, that here's the amount of money you're going to get, that's all you're going to get, and if we even see that you're going out and borrowing more money to support the state, we're going to sue your ass. Okay, because that's the people standing up for the benefit of the state and for everybody else in it. No matter what state you live in, you can do this. It's in the Declaration of Independence Constitution of the United States. You can do this. And you know what you know what it is? I'll, I'll tell you, it's real simple. Do not consent. Do not consent to their taking your money and spending it on whatever you want. Hold them accountable. Go to their offices and say, I want to know what my tax dollars are going for in this county, in this state, in this city. Mr. Uh, Governor, I want to find out where my money is going that you're spending and that you're allowing to spend and that you're writing, you know, you're signing off on this money coming into the state. I want to know where my tax dollars are going. Folks, if you haven't heard already, some countries have protested against their corrupt leaders because of austerity. Go look that up. And guess what? They've booted their leaders out. Well, Iceland did it. They arrested their bankers. They threw out their politicians. They collapsed their government rewrote a constitution and in the last seven years have been doing damn good because they told the eu and the queen kiss my icelandic butt get the hell out this is what we need to tell uh those people in that 10 square mile of washington dc get the hell out of my life leave me alone don't take my stuff and we're going to live just fine. Hey, we had streets, we had fire protection, uh, police protection, all of that. We had schools, we had roads, all prior to 1913. What happened? Well, you know what happened if you go back and check history. The progressive, President Woodrow Wilson signed into law the Internal Revenue Act and the Federal Reserve Act, and we've been screwed ever since for the last 101 years. Okay? So it's time we kick them out. Okay? It's time we do what we have to do. And if we can do it, no, 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 not if, when we do it, then we need to rebuild and restore this nation of, by, and for the people under the Constitution of the United States prior to 1871. First thing we need to do is stop all corporate uh, contributions to any political party. We need to, make, we need to outlaw that right now. I, I don't care. Oh, we need a uh, Congress. Uh, no, 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 no. We need to outlaw that immediately. Hey, folks, come join me on the uh, Halloween special tonight at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on Eastland Radio Repertory Theater on Spreaker or at eastlandradiotheater.weebly.com. That's eastlandradiotheater.weebly.com for the Halloween special tonight at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. Some uh, radio shows from yesteryear. Come check it out. 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern at Eastland Radio Repertory Theater on Spreaker or go to eastlandradiotheater.weebly.com. Go to the waynespearshow.weebly.com site. Contribute if you can, when you can, as much as you can, and I appreciate it. That will help the overhead and keeping this show on the air. So, have a great Friday. Happy Halloween in one sense. Happy birthday, Nevada. 
And I will see you Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Views Express Live on Free America Radio Network. <laughs>